in talking about true prosperity, well, there's just there's so much to talk about. Some things have come up in my heart that uh, uh, that I want to uh, I want to cover today. We've only got a few more Sundays, and we'll move into something different uh, uh, the first of the year. Uh, but uh, it's amazing how every subject covers every subject. No matter what we talk about, it covers everything we talk about. Amen. The Word of God just all works together. It, uh, I'm not a carpenter, but I, it's really cool when you see furniture and stuff that's built and it's been dovetailed together. I mean, perfectly, uh, perfectly cut where uh, it fits together, which makes it uh, uh, almost seamless and makes it almost as strong as a solid piece will be. That's the way that the Word of God is. That's why you can't take the Word of God casually and expect to be a, a, a really successful Christian. And, and let me tell you what a successful Christian is. A, sec, a successful Christian is what God declares is a successful Christian, huh? It's not based on financial prosperity. It's not based on health. It's not based on anything. It's based on what God's Word says. And I believe that uh, uh, true successful Christianity begins with us loving heart, loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And I believe all the icing will be reserved for those people who first and foremost love him. They love him when things are good, and they love him when things aren't as good. They're never moved by what goes on around them because they've learned to walk by faith. And the only way that we can walk by faith is to love him and to allow his love to love through us. So I want to look at some things that are absolutely necessary according to the Word of God uh, in order for us to be successful from His perspective. You know, uh, uh, secular uh, success uh, is a little bit different. Normally, secular success is based uh, uh, only on a number. Secular success really is based on how much do you have. And, of course, how much you have determines maybe some of the toys you have. Now, there are people that have a lot that don't care anything about toys. There are people that are billionaires that live in the same house they've lived in for 40, 50, 60 years, 70 years, perfectly satisfied with it. See, so it's it's not your stuff that makes you successful. And certainly it's not your stuff in the kingdom that makes you successful. Amen. You know, that's why there are, there are really so very few probably tremendously successful Christians because we have just not gotten it yet. We have just not realized that our devotion to Him, our time with Him, our focus on Him is the most important thing right. to Him. That's right. Amen. Not what we have. That's right. Not what we have. You know, he can make what we have more than enough, not only for us, but to be a part of his body so that everything he wants done will get done. We don't have to have the most. All we have to have is a heart after him, and we begin to prosper truly we begin to be successful in his eyes. In Galatians 3, verses 13 through 14, the word tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, And I like this last part here, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. You know, we've talked about this over the years because uh, uh, so many uh, so many Christian people, I believe there are, uh, there are, uh, there are many born-again believers who uh, uh, obviously to be born again, uh, you, uh, you have to have encountered uh, the Holy Spirit because he's the one that baptizes you into the body of Christ. But just because you've been baptized into the body of Christ doesn't mean that you've been filled with the Spirit. Right. Now, we have access to the Holy Spirit in this particular way because Jesus paved the way 
for that to transpire in our lives. And I believe it's always been something that has separated uh, uh, really good men and women, uh, just the doctrine of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You know, there have been uh, uh, splits in churches. There have been denominations. There have been those that say yes and those that say no. But, you know, since, uh, since he didn't say no when he left, he said, yes, I'm just going to go for the yes. yes. Amen. I try not to overthink stuff too yeah, much. Huh? If I overthink stuff, uh, I can get myself in trouble. Because what happens when I overthink stuff, then I find out that I'm going to be more responsible than I want to be. Amen. I don't want to have to overthink the things that Jesus has already paid for and declared would be a part of our lives. So uh, Jesus uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, as Gentiles, we were never officially under the curse, but we have been freed from any and everything because now we're the children of God. We've been freed from any and everything that could be considered a curse. Glory to God. Amen. We do not have to take on things that were a part of the curse as the children of God. Now, you can if you want to. And to be honest with you, you're going to be in a big group if you do, because most people do. They just go ahead and embrace those things, act as if nothing, just feel as if, well, I can't really do anything about it. But the truth is you really can't do anything because he already did. But what you can do is negate what he did do by not simply believing what he's done, and actually embracing what he's done. So we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law because of him hanging on the tree so that the very blessing of Abraham could come on us through the Lord Jesus and we could receive the promise of the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, obviously the Holy Spirit is a whole lot more important than most people give him credit for. And the truth is, he is, because he really is the one who brings each and every one of us personally into a place of prosperity in our understanding of God, his word, and his ability to do all that is needed for us. Let's look at Romans 8, uh, Romans 8 real quickly, Romans 8. You know, they don't have this on the board, I don't believe, but let me start in verse 14. Romans 8, for those of you that have something novel in your lap called a Bible. Romans 8, beginning in verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You know, that's kind of like a qualifier, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of like a qualifier. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, for as many as do what the Spirit of God says to do, hmm? for as many as follow Him, and we know all He's doing is relaying to us what the Father and the Son have to offer. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, that's a good place to take a check up right there, huh? Verse verse 15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but, but, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We've been adopted into the family of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 15. That was 15. Verse 16. The Spirit itself, which is obviously, if there's uh, uh, lousy translations in Uh, In the Word of God, this is the worst one. The Spirit Himself. The Holy Ghost is not an it. He is a person. He is the third person of the Godhead. Who without whom people would never be drawn to the Father. Amen. The Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit 
that we are the children of God. So when we are the children of God, when we have embraced the Son of God as our Savior, it is He, the person of the Holy Spirit, who makes it clear to you. This is not a mental clarity. This is a supernatural knowing that you've become a child of God. A supernatural knowing. In other words, nobody can take it from you. I mean, it separates you from the losers. It separates you from the pretenders. It separates you from people who you may ask, well, do you believe you're going to heaven? Well, I hope so. No, this makes you know so. Even if you've had reservations between your ears, no, you know. Because the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. That's why you should never have reservations about your reservations. You should know you've got reservations. You should know I'm not going to get bumped on that flight. I might get bumped off of some flights in this life, but I'm not going to get bumped off that flight. I am a child of God. The Spirit of God has made it clear to me. I know that I know that I know that I'm born again. I know I'm a child of God. And brain, you can do all the jacking around you want to, but you are not going to take away from me what's been sealed by the witness of the Holy Spirit in my life. We don't need to read the next verse, but you know, you can start reading the Bible and it's just hard to stop. And he goes on to say, but we're heirs of God. Yes. We're heirs of God. We'll be talking about that someone uh, uh, in nightlife. We're heirs of God and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're his favorite. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Is he your favorite? It's good. It's good. I mean, we're all excited when we're somebody's favorite, but right. huh? isn't that right? We're always excited when somebody tells us how excited they are about us. We're always excited when we find out all that he's done for us. Hmm? But are we excited about him? Hallelujah. (laughs) You guys guys can just go from quiet to a little bit just just in a moment's notice, you know. Somebody ever said that? I mean, really, if, you know, it'd be like a husband and wife. I mean, if if you're her favorite... uh, the follow-up to that would be she's your favorite. And actually in a marriage relationship, really just like it is with him, not, not you're my favorite, you're my only. Mm, you're my only. Hallelujah. You're his only. Hallelujah. He should be your only. And I suppose how we define only will prove how truly prosperous we become. Amen? Amen. It's not too heavy for you early in the morning, is it? I know people that can get up early like y'all do. I mean, you can take it. I mean, you're, uh, you're just walking. You're just walking. We're walking punch bags, you know? You can take it. Glory to God. Amen. The Word of God is soft, though. It's soft. If if you come with the right heart and we prayed that in, that you'd be receptive, then when it hits your heart, you know, you'll take it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, 17. This is talking a little bit about revelation. You know the story. We won't go through all of it. Jesus had asked his disciples, who do people say that he was? Simon obviously spoke up. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus went on to say in verse 17, and Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood. You didn't learn this at university. Blessed are you. Flesh and blood, man, education, information has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. You know, if you're not getting revelation, you're never going to be prosperous. If your life is not built on the revelation truths of God's word, you will never experience true prosperity. 
We need information from heaven. We need the word of truth, the word of life from the Holy Ghost himself. We need to know in our heart how things are supposed to be so that we're not jacked around by our intellect or by the ideas and plans of the world. Revelation. Revelation. Man, this is why this is why so many people are not successful in their Christianity. Because they can't go with what they can't understand. If they can't figure it out, they just really can't embrace it. I know, you know, as we were growing in the things of God, uh, and we've still got a lot of growing to do. But as we were growing in the, in the, in the things of God, uh, we would, we would uh, hear things and, and, and hear people uh, say things like, uh, well, you've just got to be wise. Now, what they were saying was if they couldn't believe it according to the word, then there was a wisdom that would be just as good, if not better, and that would be human wisdom. Well, we've just got to be wise. No, we got to be led. We've got to be led because that's what the Word of God says. As many as that are sons and daughters of God, they are led by the Spirit of God, not led by human wisdom. Not led by even what the bottom line says. Hmm? Pay attention now. Now listen, the Spirit of God is never going to put you in a position of discomfort. Are you listening to me? He's never going to tell you to do something that's going to make you uncomfortable. If you have a relationship with the Spirit of God, if you're a doer of the Word of God, then when He tells you to do something, you're not going to allow your flesh to consider what things look like. Amen? I mean, you may not have enough to do something, but if he tells you to do something, you can do it and not be uncomfortable because you know he's going to take care of it. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to write, have you write some bogus faith check and it bounces all over the bank it goes to. And you were going to bless, you know, brother so-and-so or uh, sister prophesy or whatever. And then that check bounced, huh? What in the world happened? You were not led by the Spirit of God. You were not led by the Spirit of God. But you know, there may, there may be times that you do things, and we did it. We did it. Our children have done it. Given and believing God that we're going to get a harvest on what we're giving. And it may have made our flesh uncomfortable when we did it. And it may put our flesh in a position where it begins to wonder why we did it. But I'm going to tell you something. You just keep professing, if you are, led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I don't make decisions out of my brain. I make decisions out of my heart based on what the Spirit of God tells me to do. And you know what? You'll never get in trouble. Because when we do what He tells us to do, we stay out of trouble. Amen. You know, that's been the problem with all of us over the years. The things that we've done that got us in trouble were not led by the Spirit of God. They were purely led by our flesh. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I, I, can be the, uh, I can be the one that can say this probably just as good as any of you. I'm going to tell you what, uh, the pleasure was not worth the payment. The pleasure is never worth the payment. I said, the pleasure is never worth the payment. As a matter of fact, the bad part about that kind of pleasure, the payment just kind of wants to hang over you. Hmm? Most of us know what that looks like. We know what that looks like. No, those that are, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons and the daughters of God. You know, who and what Jesus is to you is who and what Jesus will be to you. You make a determination. 
What does that relationship look like? What does that relationship mean to you? What is your life going to look like? Is it going to look like what he wants it to look like and what he paid for? Or are you going to go ahead and make your own decisions? Come on now, let's not play every one of us in this room. Every one of us in this room, we got room to grow. Every one of us in this room, let me tell you, every one of us in this room, we got a lot of room to grow. A lot of room to grow. Huh? A lot of room to grow. We have no business looking down our bony nose at anybody else. We've all got a lot of room to grow. And I'm going to tell you what, the more you grow, the more you got to grow. Hmm? Because the more you've grown, the more you need to grow to be able to handle the growth that you've already experienced. Glory to God. You know, some people can grow and get the big head. Hmm? Well, those that grow and get the big head, they end up being dead. Because hmm? that pride will take them out. No, we need to continue to see ourselves. Listen, I got a long way to go. I ain't got time to be jacking around. I know I'm old enough to retire, but I ain't got time to retire because I got too much to learn. Glory to God. Amen. Huh? You're not putting me out to pasture. Huh? You're not putting me out to pasture. There's more to know. There's more to know. And the more you grow, the more you want to know. I'm going to tell you, people that don't want to grow anymore, they don't know much. Because once you just taste a little bit of what's available, you want to grow more. Hallelujah. And, you know, those thoughts of apathy and uh, lethargy uh, that come on us, you know, the, 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 those, those spirits of slow down, those spirits of, oh, you've already done yours. Let the young ones take over. Have you seen the young ones? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Huh? That's a lamp. Have you seen someone? I don't even want to pretend like I don't know about some of them. I do, but I don't want to talk about them. They don't deserve the press because they're young and they're not learned. You know, some things only come by age. Honestly, it only comes by age. Now, now that doesn't mean we get fired up about getting old. <laughs> Amen. Listen, you can, you, there's only, there's certain things you can't do in, until you got some age under your belt. And it don't have to be a, four, a size 46 belt. It's not the size of the belt. It's what's under the belt. Amen. Huh? Glory to God. We have an opportunity as we age to be more valuable than we ever thought possible, especially as the men and women of God, to be able to pass on to others huh, in a legitimate way the amazing promises of our Father and what he'll do for your life. Glory to God. And you, can, you can't even explain them. All you can say is he did this and he did that. Well, how did he do that? I don't have a clue. He did this and he did that. I looked at him. I focused on him. I kept growing. Did I understand? Did I understand all the time? I understood very little of the time what was going on. All I knew is I was doing what I knew to do. I can remember when I started, I know what I was doing. I was setting up chairs. Huh? I got a personal degree in chairology, <laughs> if there's such a thing. Huh? I mean, that's important in the church world. Right. Chairology is important. Amen. That's what I did. Had a good job, good management job, but I was the setup man for the chairs. Glory to God. Hallelujah, huh? Now, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just telling you, you know, if, if you're thirsty for the things of God, you don't care what you're doing. You don't care what you're doing. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, he watches over chairologists. <laughs> he watches over chairologists. Glory to God. So if, 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 you, do, if you do chairology... Well, you better watch it. Huh? He gonna give some, he's going to give you some wisdom so that as you progress, amen, you'll be able to train other chairologists who will in turn be able to train other chairologists. Glory to God. You've got to understand what's important. The little things are important. 
if we don't do and won't be excited about doing the little things without planning in the back of our mind that we want to do big things one of these days, you'll never have any big things. Because if you're not faithful over little things, you'll never have bigger things. And you know what? When you're faithful over little things, you're never looking for the bigger things. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we know how you see him is exactly how he's going to be for you. Let's see how we see him in these verses, John 16, 13 through 15. How be it when he, this is the Lord Jesus speaking. Is anybody in here a Jesus believer? Yes. Then why aren't you a Holy Ghost receiver? How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. The one we talked about a while ago. Huh? The one we saw a while ago was the promise that was promised to us, the promise of the Spirit. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of knowledge, all truth. Huh? Hallelujah. Don't show how slow you are by saying you don't understand. Because you saying you don't understand means you're not allowing the Spirit of God to, first of all, indwell you, and second of all, to reveal to you everything that belongs to you, the very truth. He said, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. He didn't come, he didn't come to, to make a spectacle of himself. He didn't come to be some Pentecostal Holy Ghost throw you all around, run you around the room. And you know, there's a lot of things that people have done under the influence of the Holy Ghost that might have been right and might have been wrong, but it don't make any difference. The truth is he's real. He's real. His assignment is real. Now you can, you can make light of it, but most of those people that live in that realm of Pentecostal Holy Ghost feelings really don't have much of a life to follow. Are you paying attention to me? Because listen, God is a God of order. Yes. And yeah, he can do whatever he wants to do. But you know, I just take a look at what Jesus did. Jesus was a fairly orderly guy, you know? He just really boom, boom, boom. He just did everything and wrote the exact way the Father told him to do it. No deviations, no. I mean, the only thing he did weird that wasn't going on was cause arms to grow out, raise the dead, huh? He didn't run around the mountain. He didn't flop. People said, well, how come the, how come the, uh, uh, that the Lord Jesus didn't speak in tongues? Because he had the Holy Ghost without measure. He had the Holy Ghost without measure, huh? Without measure. Consequently, he knew all, understood all, but didn't need to have tongues in order to accomplish his assignment. Because he made a statement like this once, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But he was a great example. As a matter of fact, if we think about Paul, Paul was a pretty straight dude too. That's right. As a matter of fact, he had to deal with some of the churches when it came to some of their craziness that was going on. Listen, listen, let, let's, let's say it this way. If something happens out of the ordinary, then we just take a look at it and say, wow, think about that. But I'm not going to think about it long because I got my own stuff to think about. I've got things that I need to do in line with God's word. And if that's real, then that's real. If it's not, I'm not going to get swallowed up with it. Amen. I'm going to live my life in a rote way, step after step after step. I'm going to learn, just like the Bible said, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, and I'm going to grow so that I can be valuable to the Father. Good. Amen. Amen? So he said, he's going to lead and guide you into all truth. And he will, he, will, he, will not speak, he will not speak of himself. He will glorify me, verse 14 says, for he shall receive of mine 
and shall show it unto you. All things, you know, that's another thing. Well, you know what the Holy Spirit told me about you. Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me because I've got a personal, I've got a personal deal with him and he got a personal deal with me. If he's got something to tell me, he'll, he'll tell me. He'll tell me. So don't give me that second, third, fourth, fifth hand information. Huh? I got a relationship with him. He's going to tell me. And believe me, he tells me, he tells me, he tells me when I'm not right. And I'm, I'm moving as fast as I can to get the wrong out. Hmm? He tells me. You know, somebody tries to, you know, prophesy to you and all that nonsense. Say, hey, listen, obviously you've confused me. It doesn't have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. But I do. And listen, I, I don't know what he's told you, but right now I'm busy taking care of the things he told me. Please let me take care of me. And oh, by the way, I don't think he told me this, but I saw it with my own eyes. You need to get this out of your life. Or you need to get this in your life. Now, he didn't tell me that, but I just happened to see it. <laughs> I wasn't even looking for it, but I went by there and I saw this fruit and I said, "Woo!" <laughs> so the Holy Ghost didn't have to tell me. You grew it yourself. I knew it myself. And I revealed it to you. No, we have an opportunity to hear from the Spirit of God to tell us the little things that are undermining us being truly prosperous. Truly prosperous. Glory to God. He said, all things that are, that are the Father are mine. Therefore said I, that he, he who, he the Holy Spirit, shall take a mine and shall show it unto you. Holy Spirit revelation is reversed, reserved for those paying attention and then doing what he's revealed. You've got to be paying attention. He's not going to shake you around. He's not going to have you run in the back of somebody's car to get your attention or fall off your roof or whatever. Huh? You've got to be paying attention, which means you've got you to be open for correction. You got to be open for correct. You got to not just be open. You got to want to be corrected. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got to want to be corrected. And who in the world wouldn't want to be corrected, if 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 their prosperity and their success uh, was was hinging hinging on their doing the right thing? Hallelujah. Wow, you know, I'm, I, I pro I've probably learned more uh, in the last year or so than I learned all my life. <laughs> you know. And don't be calling me slow. <laughs> you don't know as much as you need to either. I'm serious. The last year I've learned, I've learned more this last year, really how, to, how things are supposed to fit together and how things are supposed to work. Now, obviously, I learned things uh, up until that time. But, you know, you got to be able to put that stuff together. Huh? you got to get you out the way. you got to get you out the way and put put that together that makes the you that he wants you to be. Yeah. And listen, I've, I've learned, I've learned so much over the last, uh, just the last little bit of time that, uh, you know, I, I haven't run into anybody that needs any more correction than I do. And that's something. And don't sit there and think, well, my God, my God, if he needs correction, I wonder if I'm saved. Well, if you're wondering about that, you probably need to get that figured out first, for sure. I'm just telling you, we don't ever want to put ourselves in a position where we, we even think we can see the finish line. That's good. <laughs> huh? That's right. That we even say, there's the finish line. Really? I don't want to see the finish line. That's right. That's right. I ain't in any hurry to see the finish line. That's right. Hallelujah. I believe the finish line is when he shows up. That's the finish line. I'm going to say glory. Yes. Hallelujah. I didn't have to go through any of that other nonsense, huh? Hallelujah. No, my finish line is when I see him. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not believing for a moment that, that I've arrived. Man, that took that seat. So, you know, and some of you, some of you got some years on me, but you know, even the oldest one of you in here, listen, you got some fight in you. That's right, amen. You got some time in you. It's good. Glory to God. You got value in you. Say, well, you know, I haven't been a very good Christian. Well, it's never too late to That's become right. a whole lot better. That's 
It's never too late to realize that the blood erases all of that. You can start right now. You can say, well, you know, surely there's something that I can do to help some people. There's something I can do to speak into people's lives that has to do with how good God's been to me. I don't care how old you are. You don't ever lose your value. You don't ever lose your value to the Father. Never, never, never. And you know the one that lies to you the most about that is you. You and the rest of you. Those that are younger, you need to understand how valuable it is to have men and women around you who have walked in the household of faith for decades. For decades. They've been sold out to the plan and the things of God. Yeah, maybe, maybe they haven't known what some of us have known, but they've stayed with the course that they're running. Glory to God. Philippians, uh, uh, Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, Paul said, that I may know him. I mean, Paul spent some time with the Father too. I mean, this guy, you talk about a sold out guy. I mean, he wasn't Jesus. He was Saul. Huh? His name was changed to Paul. He went from one that was loved and endeared by the system to one who was hated and sought after. Amen. Because he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, I'm not looking back. And he said, none of this nonsense you throw at me is even going to move me. I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you throw at me. I'm going to continue. And he's still wanting to know him. What does he say? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. To understand what he did for me. I don't have to suffer the way he did, but to understand what he did for me so that I can see what I'm doing for him. Him, really isn't much. I'm not paying a price. Huh? I pay a price when I don't serve him and honor him the way that I should. Hallelujah. Revelation. It all has to do with revelation. Paul had a revelation. Who art thou, Lord? Huh? It's me, Jesus. Huh? The one that you're persecuting. Huh? The one that you're jacking with. He's dragging Christians around, killing them, exposing them, doing all of those things. He said, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm Jesus. He says, you, you shouldn't be kicking against the goats. You shouldn't be the one that's jacking around here, boy. I've given, I've given you an opportunity now. And he sure did, did he? Knocked him right off his donkey. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He had an off your yeah. minute that's right. or moment. And it changed all of our lives. Changed all of our lives. Because he got what he got by revelation. He never saw the master face to face. He didn't walk with him. He separated himself and he heard from him. And when he heard from him, he began to tell the churches how to do. The men and women of the churches, what to do, what not to do, how to live and how not to live. Things to touch, things not to touch. Huh? Glory to God. A manual for us to be able to live by glory to God. He heard by the Spirit of God in his heart the things that you and I, if we'll live by those things, we will change our world. My world's changed. My world's, my world's different because of what I read. My wife's ways and things are different because of what she read. Our family, the church family, we're in existence because of the things that he said. Let's not play with the things. When you hear from the Spirit of God and do what he tells you to do, you're going to have true prosperity. And there'll be no sorrow with it. There'll be plenty of opportunities to be sorrowful. There'll be plenty of opportunities to be mad, to be upset, to be hurt. But you don't take them. Say, no, hey, listen, what I'm doing is more valuable than what's being done to me. What I'm doing is more valuable than what's been said about me or my family or you and your family, the people that have made fun of you, those of you maybe that have made mistakes since you've become a child of God and you've done things and made mistakes and you've had people talk about you to, with them and you remember yeah. 
that the blood of the lamb cleanses you and you're still in process and you're still in the house and you're going to make the changes necessary to follow after what he's told you to do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you can hear from the spirit of God. Spirit of God's never going to rag on you. He's never going to beat you up. Holy Ghost not going to talk behind your back. That's right. That's right. He's not going to talk behind. You know, a prophet, a prophet in the modern day in the New Testament is just somebody that's inspired. Yeah. Glory to God. I may have a little prophet in me. It's inspired to preach the truth with passion and excitement and enthusiasm. You don't meet, need me to tell you what you need to do or don't need to do. You need to do what you already know to do. And when you'll start not doing what you find out you're not supposed to do, if there's anything else you're not supposed to do, he'll tell you that personally. And he'll make it real easy, you know. I mean, it'll make you uncomfortable in your flesh. But you'll know, well, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. I'm sure glad he didn't have somebody else tell me that. See, he's not going to use a go-between. He's not going to use a go-between. Well, you know, I was praying the other day and the Lord told me, oh my God. Did he tell you to wash your car? Did he tell you to take dominion over that sink full of dirty dishes? Because the last time I was at your house, your house was a mess. Oh, I know you were praying to find out what was wrong with me. So you just let your house go because my life's more important. Bull Tweeties. Come on now, huh? That's so silly. Revelation becomes spiritual intelligence, which births a sincere commitment to be like him. Let me say it again. It's probably on the board there. Revelation, revelation, revealed knowledge, honey from heaven, let's call it. Amen? Honey from heaven, glory to God. Huh? Just, just hits you in the top of the head and just rolls all over you. Glory to God. Smells good. Huh? You're not much into feelings, but it feels good. You're really not much into feelings, but it licks good. I ain't never had no bad honey. Well, I can assure you there's no bad honey from heaven. Revelation becomes spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. That's heart knowledge. That's that no stuff. That's that stuff that I don't care what it, what it, what it does to anybody else. You're lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're lit up and you know that he's going to cause it to transpire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One last verse, Romans 8, verse 29. Why would we want that revelation? Why would we need that word? For who he did know beforehand, which is every one of us. Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? See, yeah, I mean, people can't figure out God. Here's what's amazing about God. He, he knew you before the foundation of the earth. He knew what you do and when you do it, and he wouldn't change a bit. He wouldn't cause you to go in another direction because you had to make this choice yourself. You had to grow at your own pace. Right. Hallelujah. He never changed where he was going to meet you. He was going to meet you in the promise. He was going to meet you in the promise. I'll meet you in the promise. I'm not going to meet you in something that's less than the promise. This is my promise. This is where I'll meet you. Amen. Glory to God. He said, those that I foreknew, hmm? he also did predestinate. In other words, the ones that he knew, He set it up so that they could be conformed to the image of his son. Let me tell you about true prosperity. Huh? Wish I had time to sing my song, but I don't have time. Well, maybe I'll sing it one of the other services. Oh. Oh. We were predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. This is not some spiritual, smoky, vague, huh? Euphoric deal. This is you and I being like Jesus. I wonder why we don't hear that much in church. Because what comes with it <coughs> is a little, <coughs> a little bit of... <coughs> potential 
uncomfortableness. And then, of course, you've always got some religious people. Well, that was Jesus. This is the Word of God. That's right. Saying that we were predestinated right. to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus. Maybe we've set our goal too low. Good. Yeah. Right. I'm going to be like Oral. <laughs> I'm going to be like Paul. I'm going to be like Mary. I'm going to be like Jesus. Yes, amen. His glory to be seen on me. My face to have his countenance for everyone to see. I'm going to walk. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like Jesus. Did you want to join me, babe? I don't Moving with all his grace, swift and sure in his shadow, no doubts will again have a place. I'm going to talk like Jesus, say only what God says, speak with his might, and power, not relying on thoughts that are dead. I'm going to be like Jesus, looking and talking love, always to think of others, my strength from the spirit of love. Why do we want to be like somebody else? Why do we want to be like somebody else? Why, won't, why, why do we want to set our sights low when we are predestined to be like him? Hallelujah. Thank you for enduring that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you for enduring that. Hallelujah. I mean, this is so simple. You need tr trouble or you need help misunderstanding it. It is. It's so simple. To be like Jesus. Boy, that'll get, you, that'll get your eyes higher up, won't it? Yeah, hmm? amen. Hmm? Yeah, that's hmm? right. I mean, all the things of this earth yes, that's right. grow strangely dim yes. when your life and your eyes yes. are focused on him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm sure you did, but I know I did for sure. I got a lot of motion out of this. I got a lot of motion out of this. I believe I might have added six, seven years to my life just in this one message. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. Amen. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's all stand our feet.